of course open fire cooking Argentinian style short ribs and I'll talk to you about them in a minute and we're doing something called Yumera and it is a savory corn pudding that I can't wait to try I'm testing these recipes for a for a gig I may have coming up uh, in August so I just wanted to check them out and um, that's what we're doing tonight really I'm excited I hope you guys are and I hope you guys are having a great week and staying safe and um, you know getting by so one little thing rec tech open fire cooking they don't just make pellet grills they make this thing which is really awesome I've waited a long time for it and first time I'm going to cook on a pan on my rec tech on open fire I've done it out of my fire pit before but I'm gonna come over to you come on over so I got my handy dandy you know COVID certified temperature gauge um, I just because because I've done not done this before on this grill I just wanted to see what the pans at uh, we're at uh, 275 which is really cool and uh, if I want to raise the temperature I can turn the fan on and what that does is if you want to look inside here Lane. all right so I've got the kind of a box method I've got some B&B charcoal just to start the wood I put the wood in there I'm getting those real hot embers and this is a nice gentle fire if I want to get the heat the temperature up I turn the fan up it's a nice variable speed fan and you can see how those embers are glowing now flames are dancing really increases the heat and then of course I can lower and raise the grill anyway that's enough about that we'll watch we'll learn together all right so I've got my pan on here and we're gonna get right to the recipe of the savory corn pudding and here's our ingredients we've got some butter I've got some whole milk I've got some onions I got some basil and I've got some corn this corn was uh, yellow corn it's what they uh, what they specified for this dish and it was fresh very fresh yellow Jersey corn and I had to take a box grater and grate it so no, you don't want to just cut the kernels off you want it to break them down a little more so I used the box grater and then I used the back of my knife and scraped all the milk off the cob and that's what I got here so this is eight eight uh, cobs worth that's of that soupy. yeah it's uh yeah I'll show you what it looks like it's very sweet because it's fresh Jersey corn but you can see it's kind of broken up and that's exactly what you want all right, it was a little messy doing this, so I didn't want to do it on camera, but you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. All right, so I am going to put the butter in the pan, get that melting, and go for my trusty, and I'm putting a little olive oil. So we've got the olive oil for temperature, we've got the butter for flavor, and I'm going to do it with my wooden spoon. And you can see the, the, if you can see the butter is already bubbling, which is awesome. I like it. And of course I'm using my stargazer. I needed something that I knew could withstand these, these temperatures. And stargazer is the one. So I love my stargazer pan for this. Uh, you know, it's the kind of new cast iron. It's not just for searing anymore, folks. Nice smooth surface. So you got... Uh, Almost immediately, you can see the butter is bubbling, which is great. That's pretty awesome. And of course, I'm going to use my thing. I can lower it just a little bit if I need to. Again, experimenting. I'll keep my eye on the on the temperature. Yep. So we're 265, 45. I think I can go a little bit lower. All right, I think that fire is probably about a thousand degrees. All right, so I'm going to put my onions in. This is a cup of chopped onion. One thing I've learned about this open fire cooking. It's smoky. It is smoky, but you also got to have patience. Uh, you've seen me on the, on the uh, range inside where everything's flying up in flame and, you know, this is a little bit of a different uh, different idea 
Kevin asked if it was free range corn. Yes, free range corn. All right. Now I'm going to turn the heat up using the fan again, experimenting just to see what happens. Because I want this, I want this cor the onion to sizzle a little bit more. Um, and now we don't want to brown it. We really want it to turn translucent. Hopefully you can hear me over the fan. It's not really that loud, but... It's not bad. Good. Uh, we've got Brett, Brett Gregory out there. He said hello. And Cade Ordeon said, hey, y'all. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for, thanks for chiming in and joining in. Let's see how this handle is. That handle's pretty hot. So is that the do not do at home method? Yes. A little lower. I'm going to see where I can go with this. I'm pushing the envelope now. Woo! Okay, I can put it out of view. I can nice. Okay, really, we're going for translucent. You can see they've already lost some of the white, the white color. And after that is translucent, I'm going to stir in the corn and all its liquid. And the idea is we're gonna we're gonna reduce it. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. This is working very well. We have Ethan with us. He said, "Hey guys." Hey Ethan. And My best buddy. And I think it's Michelle Desserot. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the pronunciation if I got it wrong. Uh, it says bonjour. Awesome. So here's uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about this book while the onions are cooking. Give it a crank or two up. So this book is very special to me. I got it bef way before I got the grill. Uh, it was given to Lynn and I by our friend Donko, who is our chef buddy who we met in Barcelona, who has now since moved on and he's in Ireland now. But he is Argentinian. And Francis Malman was his mentor in Argentina. So he gave us this book with a great inscription in the front, which was really nice. And this book is what I'm you know, is is seven fires. So it's about cooking over seven different fires. One of them being like this one. Another one being a cast iron cauldron, and then an oven that you make. You set two fires. You bake bread in between them. You know. And uh, so I'm using a lot of recipes. And the thing we're doing in August is going to be a typical uh, Argentinian asado, and um, it's basically a meat fest. And I can't wait. It's got great appetizers in here. And he is the authority, Francis Malman. Anything, any book you can get from him, get it. And he's got, for that asado, for instance, he's got the ingredients list, the shopping list, an hour-by-hour hour direction or directive on how to pull off this asado. And it's great. He's even got a recipe in here. Then the first ingredient is one medium cow, about 1,400 pounds. And then eight strong people to help you put it on the truss. So... It's really cool, but his recipes are awesome. I'm and, loving it so far. And they're not overly complex. Right. And I'm finding that about Argentinian cuisine, very simple, very easy, very clean, and a lot of meat, you know? We've All got, right. We've, we've got, got Andrew Billings with us from Mississippi. Hey, What's Andrew. Up? Got a couple of hunks of ACC wood in here. Andrew sells, you know, uh, a, a competition wood. You can buy it, ACC wood. Andrew's competition cut and he's got all different flavors and stuff like that um, And it's awesome, you know ships it right to your house a nice little box. I got some cherry last week So that's a beautiful thing All right, so we're starting to get a little color here. So at this point I'm going to add our corn and its juices That's gonna really stop the uh, the cooking process of the onions. Oh, this looks good already. What could be bad? Corn, butter, and onions. Wow. Nice. All right, so we want to simmer this and let it reduce. Now, this recipe, one of the last ingredients with sugar is optional. I tasted the corn. It's definitely not going to need it, especially after it reduces. So taste your corn first, and that'll determine whether you need to uh, 
whether you need to add extra sugar. I would assume if I cook this in the middle of the winter or something on the stove, I'd add sugar. But Jersey corn, no need. All right, I'm gonna get this humming a little bit. I'm gonna lower it, see if we can get that popping. So does a corn pudding kind of get thick where it's yes. where it's still like it gets thick soupy? so you can spoon it. It's okay. Not like um, it's not like uh, like creamed corn. It's supposed to be a nice, thick, beautiful thing. So we have Gary Knick. Hey Gary. Gary. Nice. Alright, let's see, it's starting to go. Not a single thing is sticking to this stargazer pan. It's a beautiful thing. All right, lowered it. Let me see if I turn that fan all the way up. See what happens. Oops. I was just showing them our garden. Nice. Because I wasn't paying attention. All right. See, look at the bubbling starting to happen. Bubble, bubble, bubble. That's all the water. It's actually hard to see because it's kind of glowy, it's yellow, it's bright. Okay. And that's way too hot for me to get in really close. Oh yeah. So, I'm going to stick with the glowing. Okay, once this really starts to bubble a little bit, I'll raise it back up. Beautiful. This is awesome. Uh, and this, for me, is one of the hottest fires you've worked with oh. in our backyard. Oh yeah. A lot hotter than the Weber. I'm sad to say my Weber has now become my ash bucket. I'm sorry, what? It's become my ash bucket. No. I, you know, usually I'll have hot coals left, so I'll throw the coals in the Weber, and then I got I, I'll you know I dump the ashes out, but uh, and then I empty them out of the Weber once they're you know like the next day, because I definitely want to put the cover on at night just in case it rains. Can't do that with hot coals. Other than in the Weber? Mm-hmm. All right. Now I'm too close. So what we're going to serve the... Uh, let's talk about the short ribs real quick while the corn is going. So Argentinian style, what is that? Um, anyone that has uh, had Korean galbi short ribs, you know it's like cut real thin across the bones. Not like fancy schmancy restaurants where they do short rib on the bone or whatever. Um, and that's what we got here. So what I did was I found a nice uh, rack at my, I happen to be at a Spanish market. They'll, they have them at regular supermarkets too. And they'll do this for you if you ask them to. And I asked them to cut them across the bone uh, an inch thick. So that's what we got. Beautiful inch thick short ribs across the bone beautiful marbling I think these are probably choice they look fantastic though All right, let me raise this up just a bit now we got a nice simmer going and you kind of see me kind of like walking away from the fire a lot because it's really hot over there it is hot all right gorgeous uh, Kevin asked how do you get the ashes out <clears throat> I use a brush and a, and a scoop, like fireplace tools. So I'm looking for short ones to make it a little bit easier. But, you know, I also, you know, I have an ash vacuum, but the filter clogs up so quick, you got to dump it before you got all the ashes out, so we're not going to do that. And Pete Romano <laughs> says, hey, replying to Kevin, you pick it up and you shake it out. Look at those gardens. Woo! Okay. Um, so we are... Uh, so I'm about to add a little bit of the milk. We gotta add it in two stages. See if this is thickened any. Oh yeah, you can see it got thicker. Yep. But I definitely want it thicker. Okay, I'm gonna come back over to you. It, it actually, the yellow has brightened up a little bit too. Nice. Which, is, which is great for the camera. Okay, it's not. Definitely gotta be careful leaving my wooden spoon hanging over the edge. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of the milk, about a quarter cup. This is a half cup of milk. I'm going to thicken just a little bit more. We talked about the ribs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to salt them. And because, you know, I'm a guy for authenticity, I'm using sea salt. Where are you? Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm using sea salt in a bag. I get it at the... You know the Spanish market uh, for everyone who does the churrasco. So I'm gonna, you know, sprinkle. And this is very coarse, more coarse than um, kosher salt. It's a little wetter. So this is primarily what they do in Argentina with all their meats. There's no fancy. There's no fancy, uh, you know, like marinades or anything. Pretty much. And then they'll serve it with a vinegary sauce, similar to chimichurri, which we've done before on the show, so I didn't do it again, but I made some earlier today. So there we go, nice salt, sea salt, the real deal. Back to our corn. All right, so that has thickened. And I'm going by the picture in the book, and the picture in the book shows it when they have it on the platter that it's, it's kind of very it's very thick and standing up so I want to make sure that I can do that yeah so right now it's just it's thicker than cream corn right now yeah and it's getting even thicker you okay honey hot uh, smoky smoky We're gonna have to get that camera on a long stick. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm downwind of the smoke, so you are. Okay. So it's blowing past you and into. Oh wait, just like normal into my face. All right. So we've got. Uh, it, it's thickened enough. I'm gonna put in half of this milk and stir it in. I'm gonna let that milk kind of absorb into it, and then we'll come back and we'll do another dose. Awesome. I'm loving it. A little bit more maybe? Yeah. And did did you say that you did that? What did I say? Did this recipe come from the Seven Fires cookbook? This recipe is in the cookbook. Definitely. We'll post it on our website. Awesome. So I already have yeah. it in paprika. Uh, so Kevin, yes. Kevin suggested that I get a drone. Yeah. So I wanted to, you know, I mentioned paprika, and I'm going to urge you guys. I know we've talked about it before. Um, I use a recipe program called Paprika, and it's fantastic. It makes saving recipes from the Internet really easy, sharing recipes, scaling recipes, making shopping lists, an app. It's really beautiful. It's, uh, I forget what, I mean, I don't think it costs a lot. I've got a, the Android version, and I got the Apple version, and I recommend that you get it if you have a lot of recipes and it makes it easy to cut and paste like I learned and I have a group of the uh, the uh, paprika recipe sharing network and uh, I learned something this week that if you get an OCR app so I can take a photo of text and it will convert it to cut and pasteable text makes it really easy to add recipes from a book without having to really? type it all out I'm, I'm Ooh, this is spicy. Mm -hmm. um, so, Jeff Collette says, does the grill have a rotisserie? The grill does have a rotisserie. If you check out Grateful Chef group, I did a, put a video up there the other day of doing a chicken. So this, this bracket right here, so you, you, you hang the motor off of this bracket, and it's got a spit, goes onto this side, comes with all the, uh, all the, the counterweights for the rotisserie. It made phenomenal chicken. I mean, seriously. No, this looks really good. I'm gonna raise her up, a little rough oil. So, open fire cooking is not set it and forget it. It takes some tendon to, which I am totally okay with. It's like relaxing. 
so smoking cigars it's just like a relaxing activity this is to me this is awesome I feel like I'm really you know making the effort to make a great meal so so yeah. the next time you're out here you should be smoking cigars cooking oh, meat yeah. I don't know if I can Egg. smoke and cook without getting some internet flack about it. All right. Thinking this needs to be a little bit thicker. So, there's four to five minutes, depending on the size, freshness of the corn. So, we're going to let this go. How about that? We're going to start thinking about putting on our short rib now. I'm going to move this off to this side. I'm going to let it go until it's thicker, until it's as thick as I want. You know, my kitchen, my rules. So I want to get this grill hot. So I'm bringing it way down. Because I want to sear the... I want to sear the short ribs. Whew. Fire is spitting. And is the fan on? The fan is on low. Okay. If I turn that fan up. Let me see this fire. Yeah, it's beyond what this can register. So it's over, it's over, uh, you know, it's like a thousand degrees down there. Over a thousand. I think that means it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Kevin bought the pepper dab uh, when we first talked about it. Yeah, I love so it. Really it's great. You can email stuff. It's super easy. I mean, if Kevin can use it anyway. Right, Kevin? <laughs> I'm waiting for the camera to start melting. All right. All right, so. Next step on the corn, I'm going to chop up a little bit of fresh basil from the garden. So I've got Graham Cuban. Hey, Graham. And it's salt and you and collaborate on a cook on the wild side. Each one do a variation of a recipe and steam it. Nice. What are you doing over here? I'm chopping some basil. I'm going to add the rest of this milk in there. And then if we get that, do another stir. Should be nice, creamy, and thick. So, of course, when this cools down a little bit, it will thicken up. You know, firm up, I should say. So, that's what I'm counting on. And this looks absolutely delicious. A Leland Goodwin said, you great stuff. Love this. Just shared with his cooking group. Fantastic. Thanks, Leland. Hi, Missy. The more, the merrier. Missy, love the new menu items. I keep pointing over at Lynn. Love the new menu items. <laughs> I'm used to the, you know, the camera being right there. And it just doesn't have a red light. Oh, I guess it does. All right, so but we got is, the rest of the milk in. It's in the vegetable garden, so hey. Yeah. Um, chopping some uh, basil. I didn't want to chop it too soon, so I didn't want it to turn black. This gets stirred in. And, as if that weren't enough, a little bit of uh, red pepper flake just to get a little punch but not too much because Lynn doesn't like too much stir that in and okay. I'm gonna pull this out and let this cool a little bit where are you gonna put it I'm gonna put it right on that table what table the metal table right there or I can put it on the gas grill uh, we've got uh, Jeff Collette asked, what was the name of the app again? It is Paprika, and it's, uh, you look for Paprika 3. Paprika and the number 3. What's the difference? No, uh, 3 is the new new version. And I'm it's great. Everything's sa uh, saved on a cloud, and uh, 
it syncs like my Android phone syncs with my with with the app on my iPad. So if ever I add one to the iPad, it gets to the other one's all saved on a cloud. All right, this is your beautiful corn pudding. I'll let Lynn give you some bird's eye view of that. I'm going to give a little bit of coarse salt in there. Strangely, I would say it looks like scrambled eggs, mushy scrambled eggs. Uh, this is going to cool down nicely. It Hopefully smells it won't. amazing. Hopefully it won't kill the table, but that's okay. All right, that's done. Short ribs, they've been salted. I am very sure that this grill is hot. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. Turn that fan down. And on they go. I've got two little pieces of boneless here, too. Crackle, snap, crackle, pop. Ooh, here's your head. Love it. And in. Get my pigtail. Pigtail. So you want to go about three, four minutes per side here. Then I'm going to push the envelope. And turn that fan up a little bit. Uh, Dave Levine's asking, what was the difference between the original Paprika app and the Paprika 33? Do you know? They had some changes, just, you know, upgrades, stuff like that. So, I've, I've never upgraded, and I do fine. Yeah. It, it, if, if you get the, if you get the uh, Paprika 3 and you had the original, you can migrate your stuff. No problem. Alright, so it's sticking to the grill. What does that mean? Not ready to turn yet. Okay, Leland Goodwin, um, he asked if you were on the new wild side, and yes. Yep, just got it last week. And he said, if you can, talk to the sturdiness, because he's interested in getting one. Yep. But he's st skeptical bleh, skeptical about the strength and integrity compared to other models. I don't think you can compare it to other models, but you can really just talk to yeah. this Listen, one. Uh, the first time I used a wild side was the first one. And it was at the Memphis in May World Championship Barbecue Competition. And I fell in love with the thing. I did a bone-in dry-age ribeye on the rotisserie. It was absolutely phenomenal. This thing is solid. It's heavy. I think the shipping weight was almost 300 pounds. Um, they took out the warming draw, so now it's just open shelving. But um, And that's actually the lid. Yeah, this is actually the lid that I just placed here. I can show you. You know, so. so it's open shelving. I just figure, and this is not by design that the lid fits here, but you know, I'm a guy. So, so, so it sort of fits there. Yeah. And so what happens is you raise the you raise the rack, then you put the lid on, and then the rack just comes down and you know sits there. So man, does this smell good? Get that fire cranking. We're gonna move these up a little bit. And what's happening now, of course, the fat is hitting those coals. The fire is kissing the bottom of them. Beautiful, beautiful churrasco. Get this over a hotter spot. That looks lovely. Now, of course, short ribs are not served rare or medium rare. Um, they're better closer to medium Why or is more. That? Well, because it's a it's a tougher cut. So, just gotta let it go. Again, open fire cooking requires a little bit of patience. Daniel says the cook looks great. I think he's talking about you, Eric. You look great. Thank you. <laughs> I try. Uh, I try. I don't. I don't think he was really talking about you. I think Carolyn Leonard watching tonight, live oh, nice. on YouTube. Oh, I haven't been over to YouTube. See, see if they're saying anything. Okay. Yeah, look at that. This is fantastic. I could. I listen. 
I couldn't ask for anything more. This is just a phenomenal piece of equipment for me. And my my thinking too is if they're using Rectex at, at the uh, you know co the Memphis in May competition, that's good. That that's uh, that's good enough for me. And we have it because he's been talking about it nonstop for a year. since you were with Memphis in May, so yep. over a year now. All right, we're gonna flip this boy right here. I like it. I like the little pigtail. Me too. I'm and, uh, and I'm like a, a a flipper, so I like to you know not just flip it once. I'll flip it again. I, I like to develop that crust. Yeah, I like the pigtail. Let's see how we're doing over here. Nice. This looks really good. It smells awesome. Yeah, and there's a nice amount of fat in these. Great marbling. And he said he wants it so bad. It's nice to see someone using it live. And Jay Judge just sent this over to Lynn saying, saying I want one. this. No, no, no. We need one. We need one. There's a difference between I want and I need. Guys, I'm going to jump back to the point. I just want to see how it's going along. All right, so it's. I envision it to be thicker, but I'm going to see. I'll take a taste. You know, we throw it back on. Okay. It is supposed to be a pudding, so have taste. That's the best corn you ever tasted. Awesome. I'll put it back on just because I can. Uh, Kevin said, hey, I, I bet you could really crank some food out of that beast. Oh yeah. So we'll we'll be testing that out in terms of how yeah. much food we're getting out on, in, in August. August. I think I'm going to be have a whole ribeye on the rotisserie, and I'm going to be cooking short ribs down here, and it's going to be crazy. And then chickens. Chickens. Also testing the thickness because you know what if you know maybe I need to go three quarters of an inch like a little bit thinner but yeah this is how you learn this is how you figure it out I want to and I get a taste test for you before we actually do the event uh -oh. Nice char going over here. Look at that. We have Jonathan Redlinger. Hello, Chef and Lynn. Loving the Santa Maria and glad to see new meats cooking. Keep them coming. Yeah. I wanted to buy, uh, also wanted to buy some picanha, you know, top sirloin. But the price of that went so sky high that it's like 10 bucks a pound. So, and normally, you're, normally your picanha would taste, take about three, four bucks a pound? Yeah, I've, I've bought it for a lot cheaper. Beautiful. Flip. Flip. You're getting some good crust on that. Mm-hmm. Throw a little bit more salt on there. Yeah! Not crackling and popping. I'll, I'll say that uh, that crackling is like music. Mm -hmm. So far, I'm pretty happy. Okay, so uh, we've got Jonathan Carney. I may have missed this. What temps are you anticipating? Are you cooking at? And what type of wood? So you can actually give them the actual temp. Well, this is, if I use my thermometer, it's above what it can read. So what is it now? So this is uh, 991 degrees. So it's, almost, it's 1,000 degrees. And then uh, the wood I'm using is hardwood. Unfortunately, I'm like a, kind of like Texas, where you can get, you know, post oak. 
exclusively. Um, here in Jersey, the wood guys do not separate the hardwoods. So it's hardwood. Uh, there are a lot of oak trees where I live, so I'm guessing uh, primarily it's oak. And the only thing is, it can't be a wood that has a sap like uh, pine or fir or any of those because you don't, you know, you obviously don't want that in your food. It puts a bad taste and it's probably poisonous. Um, so I'm using just regular hardwood and a couple of, I put a, a chunk or two of the cherry wood that I got from uh, Andrew and just for flavor. Because this wood, you know, this is not like smoking. I had to change my way of thinking. Smoking, you're using wood for flavor, I guess, and if you got a stick burner, you're using it for fuel, too. So this is the first time I'm actually using wood for fuel. So. Uh, so Jonathan Carney Dam, that's incredible. Of course, looks amazing. And it's wild right now. Yeah. Yeah, that is just phenomenal. And then, you know, it's funny, Francis in the book says, don't hesitate to cut into the meat to see if it's done, you know what I mean? Like, his his attitude is, you know, it's not that bleeping serious, I guess. It's supposed to be fun, and it's supposed to be an eating experience. It's supposed to be, a, you know, a community gathering kind of thing, so... I'm all for that. So I'm going to take this boneless off here and see where we're at. We must be getting to, towards the end of our time. Is this true? I have no idea. We are well over. Oh, all right. try to cut into it and see where we're at. Always looking for the grain. I come over to you before you keep going. So he's got a little bit of color to it. It's okay. Well, oh. meaty, delicious. You're supposed to be paying attention to me. I am. Yes. Why? What happened? I probably wasn't looking at you. No. Yeah. Try it again. All right. Delicious. Absolutely first. delicious. Okay. Let me see if I can give Lynn a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I can cook it a little bit more. Well, Definitely does, can does go. Need, does it need, need to go more? Sure. Okay. Here, take a piece. Let's see what you think. Mmm. Wow. Well, flavor, right? Yeah. Scott Medlin, awesome. Yeah, this is like the grill of my dreams over here, guys. Really tender, very juicy. I'm gonna serve it with a little bit of that chimichurri I told you about. So we're going to go ahead and eat this as is, like that. Uh, okay, we've got Kevin McLeany. Uh, what, so, sorry, I'm late. What's in the Stargazer? Stargazer is an Argentinian savory corn pudding. And I just put some chimichurri on this meat. Hmm. There, Lynn. Got to feed Lynn. Mm-hmm. This is definitely thickening up and, more and to where I like it. Sophie said the setup is B E A U beautiful. B E A U beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's my awesome daughter in Seattle. That's right. All right, you can see this is definitely getting thicker. I like it. Is it getting too cooked on the bottom at all? No, That's not sticking cool. at all. 
beautiful. Considering it's sitting on, well, it's probably a not thousand there. degrees. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty I'm, close. I'm say, over there, it might be 900. Mm hmm. All right, shorty ribs. And a beautiful crust. It looks like a bear. <laughs> maybe a bear, or maybe it's a cow. Yeah. Looks like a cow. All right, much happier with this corn pudding. So we're gonna keep going. As long as it's not burning, we'll keep turning. Kevin likes the rope lights on our trees. We actually have them across the back of the house too. Thank you. So. They light up the whole back patio. Mm-hmm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch positions over here. The hook keeps getting caught on the grate. Just to be close up of the corn pudding. Why are we switching sides? Well, I'm gonna put the pan over here. So get the left side of the pan cooked a little bit. Okay. Oh yeah. This is awesome. I think we're almost done. Alrighty. But we have to take those. Okay. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take the thinnest one off and we're gonna cut into it. Because Francis says it's okay. I'm okay with it. Even if Francis Francis wasn't. Alright, let's cut into this baby. Look at that, honey. Alright. So typically you would just cut it between the bones. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, we'll these end pieces here. Mm. Really good. So you can, you know, either cut it off the bone or you can just, you know, cut it into small chunks like this. Give Lynn a little taste. It's hot. Mm. Good? Mm hmm. All right. Oh. So. Call it the bony. Let me stop Moo. chewing. Moo. Nice grill. Thank you. So guys, we're gonna we're gonna end this. I'm gonna take these off. We're gonna serve them right on this uh, on the cutting board. We're gonna have our corn pudding, which looks much better. Leave it on longer so it'll thicken to your liking. Serve it with our chimichurri sauce. Again, I want to thank you guys for joining me on this and all the other episodes. Go to YouTube and you can watch the, you know past episodes. Um, and you know you can search for videos on the group and you can uh, go on my page Eric Eisenbud on Facebook and you can see it all and check me out on uh, Instagram and if that weren't enough our website www.eatingwithcheferic.com this is where the recipes live and um, lots of travel stuff when we can get travel again and uh, I have unending gratitude for you guys because without you guys I wouldn't be doing this I cook. And I'd eat. And I wouldn't eat. Just because of you. So you got to keep coming back. Anyway, be well, eat well, be kind, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next great.